how to set up the S3 log stash plugin, the S3 input plugin, so you can pull in files from a AWS S3 bucket and then put those into Elasticsearch. So this is a release from Elastic on the improved resiliency of the S3 input plugin. And here's another page from the Elastic documentation explaining how the S3 plugin is configured. Once you get it all installed, then you can configure it using all of these options. So I have an example file I'll put in GitHub and also in a gist so you can see that and you'll see it along the way in this tutorial. So I had to set up a few things in AWS just to make sure that this was something that um, you could follow and understand how it's all set up because I'm also showing a couple different ways for remote access so you could securely access your machines and you don't need a machine in the public um, in the uh, in a public subnet unless you need VPN access you could set up an SSH tunnel but I'm not going to get into that today sometimes it works for me sometimes it doesn't it probably has something to do with the network in AWS and um, I'm, I'll get into that in a separate video so this is the system admin or person trying to access Elasticsearch. This is Elasticsearch. This is actually a managed Elasticsearch instance running in AWS. I haven't sized any, everything here, so it has an ideal budget. But if you launch Elasticsearch, you probably want to launch it into a private subnet, which means only machines inside of the VPC in AWS will be able to reach it. So you would naturally want to launch a server in a public subnet. You would SSH into that server, and then you could reach your Elasticsearch machine, and you could run log stack here and then put your data into Elasticsearch that came from the S3 bucket using the plugin. If you wanted you could also latch a private server and then connect to that private server through an open VPN server. I have one set up. I'll show how to set that up. Or you could launch a Cloud9 server, which is something I use in AWS, a separate service. And the Cloud9 server is in a public subnet, but it's a little more secure and you can log into that Cloud9 server through the AWS console. And once you log in through the AWS console, then you can SSH into this machine. You just have to copy your key onto that machine so you can SSH into here. Then you can run Logstash from here. So I've already set up Logstash, the Logstash plugin on here, but I'll go through it again. And it's already put data into Elk, but I destroyed that index. So we can do it again and show you how to do that. And then I have OpenVPN running, so we can use OpenVPN to log into those machines too. So what I'll do right now, I have OpenVPN already running is I will switch to the um, the terminal so you could see me log into this machine. So if I started from scratch, I would SSH into this machine in the public subnet. And now I'm on this public machine and I need to go through the steps of installing Logstash. So I have steps for installing Logstash here. You'll run an update and then install Java, check the version of Java, import the RPM file that you need, edit the or import the uh, the uh, key so that you can verify that it's legitimately talking to the right server. And then you would um, open the logstash repo uh, um, config file for yum and then put in the data so that you can download and install logstash using that new repo and then install logstash start the service stop the service you'll get a log file I have another window tailing the log file that's uh, this window here that's tailing it on the server right now and then you will install um, mlocate if you need that to find where the logstash config files are but they're actually here user share logstash I'm, I'm sorry um, etsy logstash config d and you'll create a Logstash config file there. This is just to list the Logstash plugins that are on the machine and you'll see that this new version of Logstash already has the S3 input and even output plugin installed. And then we start Logstash and you can see the data in the logs. So I'll run these anyway. Um, well, I'll skip running these. I'll run these on the private server again later. But these have already been run and Logstash has been installed. And from here, I can just run the command to look at the plugin the plugin comp file so you could see that uh, I think it's um, actually not in the right location here uh, 
this is the configuration file so I'll have an example of that in the github gist and this has some notes up here and then the input you can use an access key and secret key but the plugin is set up to use the role that the machine's been assigned this has been assigned a role so we can access s3 and then you'll put in the region remember to put in the region or you'll get an error unless you're in us east one which is the default region you'll set up a bucket name I already created that bucket and put a CSV file and the CSV file is in a path called logs so if you have a bucket and it has a lot of information in it and you just want a certain prefix then you'll use a prefix specified here. I'll show that bucket here has a bucket and the prefix logs and inside that logs path you'll find this file, the CSV file. That CSV file is a file I got from Kaggle. Kaggle has lots of data for free for analytics, machine learning, lots of things. And I downloaded this data set from Kaggle. Um, I'll try to put a link inside the notes so you can see that. So this is the config file. I don't have a username and password for the Elasticsearch um, service right now. Later on, if I added that, then I'd have to update this somehow. But I haven't done that myself. So what I'll do is I'll start Logstash since it's already been configured and then I'll look here at the config the log file and the log file is in var log log stash and then this is the plain log file and it'll start showing that the plugin is up and log stash has started it's loading the plugin this is from the previous output from that loading and you can see that it um, connects to S3 it uses a file to see how far it's been in the process and then it starts to load that data into Elasticsearch so this looks like it's a pretty normal startup and it's installing the template that we just looked at and then registering the S3 bucket and then the pipeline started so right now it's putting that data into Elk and since I have the VPN already running I can go into the Elasticsearch service and I can click on the link for Kibana because this is in a private subnet but I can see it with the VPN and now I can look and discover and I won't see anything because I don't have any indexes set up so I need to set up some indexes here in Elasticsearch I'm not an Elasticsearch expert, but um, this is one of the things I do to try to figure out how to get everything to work. I think I already have this index set up, but I'll delete it and add it again, an index pattern. So uh, we'll create a new index pattern, and it starts with logs, and star just means match on everything after that. So right now it's not, um, it's not uh, finding anything because it's likely it hasn't received any data yet um, in this index. So I'll try to do this. I'll try to do a refresh and then go back again and type in logs. Yeah, you could set the prefix inside the comp file. Here it says logs dash and then this percent and then it's going to add the date. So let's try this again in management, index patterns logs okay I haven't found anything yet let's look at our log file it may be because the plugin has already imported data from this um, path so far so maybe I'll do this uh, a shortcut because the plugin is designed to look for um, updates every 10 seconds. So I'll try to copy the file and then paste it again and then the plugin should see a new file. Um, okay. I think I may have to upload a separate file. So what I'll do is I'll paste the file here then inside logs I'll remove this file the plugin is very intelligent I guess and then knows when the file is has not been changed
Okay, and there's another file now. And then hopefully the plugin should see that file. It should check every 10 seconds for updates. And then should start reading that data and then storing it to Elasticsearch. So what I'll do is I'll try to stop blog stash and then start again. So this is what comes through the log file whenever it's stopped and then it's restarting now. Okay, this is great. So it should be running now. And then we may have data inside of um, S3 now. It may be because of this um, default file. Um, so I may have to remove that file so it starts over or upload and rename the file. Let's give it a try. run this command to display the indices. So I can see a new index here in Elasticsearch. Uh, I previously deleted that index. So now I'll go to configure a new index. And now we have a match. So I go to next, for this index pattern. I'll select timestamp, create the index pattern. Fantastic. And then this is where I would add some uh, details for what I'd like Elasticsearch to use when it's looking at the input and how it uses, sets the type. I'm going to not look at that right now and just go back to my index. And then there is the data that's coming in from that CSV file in Elasticsearch. So the plugin should keep running and then pick up any data that's added to this S3 bucket. So now um, you could see that the plugin's working. You have files on how to install it, but I'll install it from scratch right now so you could see what that's like. So first, I'll go back to this server. Of course, this server is the public server that I SSH into directly and is loading data from this bucket into Elasticsearch. So I'll stop Logstash first on this server. And then I will log out of that server. And I'll cancel this because I don't need this anymore. And what I'll do is I'll set up um, I'll set up Logstash using this Cloud9 server SSH to this server. So I'll stop the OpenVPN connection now. And I'll go into the AWS Cloud9 service. So that Cloud9 service is here. Services and Cloud9. And when you open Cloud9, you'll see environments. There's either environments that you've created or environments that have been shared with you, and then account level environments. So I'll go into this environment, open the IDE. That's going to look very much like this window that I already had open, but I'll open it again from scratch. So this is actually running on a server in AWS that I provisioned when I created the Cloud9 environment. This Cloud9 server is here, and this is inside of a public subnet. That's a requirement for Cloud9 but I can SSH into this private subnet. So it's another strategy for remote access. Okay. So it's pulled up uh, my shell where I was previously. And inside the shell, I've already copied in my PEM file. You can just um, display the contents of it and then copy and paste the contents into a file here. And then I want to connect into the server in the private subnet. Um, use my key file, and then I need the IP address of the server in the private subnet, which I have labeled S3 plugin private here. Now I'm logged in, and there's nothing on this server, so now I need to install Logstash from scratch. So I'll copy this. So it's going to take a little, little bit of time, but it'll update the server and then install Java, check the Java version, display it, 
install the um, the key that we need and then I will open this file and paste in the contents here this shouldn't take too long okay that's great so now I'm going to open this file and here's the contents we need so I'll uncomment it paste that in and this is a problem I had with Cloud9 sometimes I have to do a control C and then right and quit so I updated that file put the comments back in so now I can try and install a log stash. Now it's installing log stash without a problem. And then I can start log stash. But if you start log stash, it'll complain and say it can't find any config files. But I'll do that anyway just so we can see um, what happens. OK, this is great, installing from scratch. So I'm going to start log stash and we'll look at our we'll look at our um, log file here maybe that it hasn't created that file yet okay we have log file now And we can see that it's creating this directory, starting log stash, but no config files are found in that path. So we can we can feel good that it log stash is installed properly. And now we'll stop log stash. And then we will install the config file. So this is our comp file. We want to put that comp file in the right directory. Um, and this is this was here. In the event that um, you weren't sure where the Logstash plugin um, directory was, then you might want to install a tool called mlocate, and then you run a command called um, update db, but you need sudo, and that will update the database. That's essentially indexing the file system on this server, and then you can do a search. So you could type in um, locate, and then the term you'd like to locate, which is Logstash. And there's going to be a lot of results. I'll show that you get a lot of results when you run this command. So you likely want to pipe the results to something that helps shorten it and make it easier to read. So we'll pipe it to more. So we'll look at the top of the results. And you can see here Etsy log stash and then user share log stash. And this helps you see where the files are on the file system that have log stash in the path. So you could see um, user share log stash bin and then um, log stash dash plugin, which is what we're looking for. But it's here already for you in these instructions. So we can just copy and paste that. So now it's going to list all the plugins that are installed by default when you've installed Logstash. So the S3 plugin is there, and uh, input and output plugin. So you'll see output S3, and you'll see input S3. So there's no need to install that plugin if you install it um, if you install it with the new version of Logstash. So next, we're going to set up the comp file, and we need to get the contents of the com comp file. So I'll grab this contents. This is the same as the other. OK. And Control C. And then I can do my Shift colon. So our comp file is there now. Our bucket and our path, everything is there. And inside of, um, inside of Elasticsearch, that lo that um, that index still exists, so we could delete that index if we'd like. Um, so what I'll do to make it easy is um, I'll try to talk to Elasticsearch directly. I'm not an Elasticsearch expert, but 
I do what I can to get things to work. So Elasticsearch has an HTTP API, so we can go back to Cloud9 into our secure console here. If we do a curl against that, we'll talk to Elasticsearch. So um, if you'd like to, you can send a delete command to, um, to Elasticsearch. But this is just to show that I can reach Elasticsearch. If I wanted to do that, um, we'll give it a try, I guess. Okay, so we'll use our curl dash x and then delete and then our path. All right, and we'll use this. Our, our host here. Back to our Cloud9 window. Okay, so we couldn't find that server. We could not find the host. Let's try to check and make sure we have the right host name. We do. Let's look at our example again. New HTTP colon slash slash and the host name. This should be correct. But it's possible we need to specify the port. Oh, could not. Yeah, I think that's uh, part of our problem. I left out part of the host name. Okay, so we get an error there. This index is not found. Of course. So now it was acknowledged. So that index is gone. Acknowledged is true. It's because I included the port there at the end. So that index is deleted, so I didn't have to turn the VPN out and go back into Kibana. It's good to learn how to use Elasticsearch this way, just in case you don't have access to the UI. So if I do a curl and a get request to this URL. So you get back the answer again. And then if I use underscore cat um, indices, it should show me the indices that are in the Elasticsearch cluster. So that indice is gone now. We deleted it. So now we can be sure that when we run our plugin, it should be able to create that indice when it inserts data, and then we'll see it again when we access the server. So on this server now, we'll check the status of Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is not running. or we'll check the status of Logstash. So we'll start Logstash now. And we should look at the logs. Uh, 
Okay, so this is good. So it has a connection again and using that file. So it should be running and putting data into Elasticsearch again. So I'll cancel this and then I'll run this again to look at our indices and you can see we have a new indice based on that comp file. So now this is running again on the new private server that was connected to through Cloud9. So this is me logging into the console, connecting to Cloud9, and then connecting to this successive server. So I could connect to any server in my private subnets now. And then this server is putting data into Elasticsearch, and that data came from this S3 bucket. So now I'd like to see that data again, and I can't set up an SSH tunnel. So what I'll do is I'll turn the VPN back on. I've already had this set up, and I'll connect, and... Put in the credentials, so now I'm connected again. And now I can go back to Elasticsearch. Click on the Kibana link. It should load Kibana without a problem. And inside of Discover, I think we still have our search index. So our search index is now being populated with data again. So this is good because um, it shows how we can connect uh, securely and then we can set up our VPN. What I'll do right now is just to um, help you understand that this is working as expected. Um, I will set up an open VPN server again from scratch just so that um, if you need it, it's, it's helpful. So I will stop this server that I have running right now and terminate it. This VPN server. I'll terminate this server, and then you'll see this VPN connection fails. So while that's running, I'll launch a new server. If I go to AWS Marketplace, Open VPN, select the Open VPN server. You could select whichever one you need, whichever one's best. Accept the agreement. I'll launch a pretty decent sized server for VPN access need to make sure the server comes up in the right subnet. So I'll select my subnet. i got to select a public subnet because I'm going to connect to it from the open internet. I need an IP address. don't need to assign a role. I'll turn on detailed monitoring. And then I'll try to connect to the server. don't need more than 8 gigabytes of space. I have this tag just as good um, practice to know who created a server, but I have a, uh, a feature called auto tag set up in my account so that I can um, automatically tag the server. So I'll select an existing security group. I have one here already for OpenVPN. Launch, select a key I've used before, and then launch this instance. Now you can see OpenVPN failed here, so I'll disconnect. I'll be connecting to the new server. Once this is launched and up and running, I can connect to it, and then everything will um, be able to work from scratch with OpenVPN. So this is our new OpenVPN server. This is our IP address. So for now, I'll type this IP address in, but I'm not going to use it yet. have the credential set up. So after the server is up and running, we need to log into it remotely with SSH. So I'll get that that prompt ready right now. And for OpenVPN, you'll use the user OpenVPN AS and at the IP address. And whenever you log into it for the first time, you're going to get a prompt to accept the license and then set the settings up. You can just press enter and go through all the settings. But those settings help you control how clients connect and how they access everything successfully, uh, successively after connecting. Um, so let's take a look at this server that's launching. It's still initializing. 
that's good. And I'm going to make sure I put links to this information here on how to set up and install everything else for Elasticsearch so that way um, you can reference this and I'll try to include this diagram in a GitHub repo as well so that you can see that information. And maybe a link to the data should be in the notes too. These are the gists that will be posted to explain how everything works. So let's take a look at this server. AWS is pretty fast in setting things up. So it's initializing it, running some checks. Those are hardware checks and then um, hypervisor checks. And sometimes you're able to log into the server before those are done. So this is good. This is a new server with the fingerprint, so yes. And then this is the prompt I was describing. You'll type yes for the agreement. And then all of these settings that come up afterwards will just hit enter to accept the defaults for them. Those are the ports that we set up previously and a few other settings. So it sets all those things up. OpenVPN is ready to run except for we need to set the password. So sudo password and then OpenVPN is actually the named user and then we'll set a password. We told OpenVPN to use the password for the user's login for the client. So I set that up now. I can exit out of OpenVPN and that username and password is here. So I'll connect now and it should give me a prompt to accept um, the certificate. So I'll say yes and you'll get prompted again. And yes, and now we're connected again to that network via OpenVPN. So now just to prove that, I should be able to um, curl the any server that's inside of this subnet. Let's say I'm um, trying to do a curl against this server in the private subnet. It may it may work, or not a curl, but a ping. So I can reach that server using the private IP address. And I can do a curl against Elasticsearch now too. So that works, so I know I'm inside the network. And now I'll go into Elasticsearch and click on my Kibana link and loads up Kibana and then I should be able to go to discover and see my index search index and it'll populate all the data from that CSV file so I hope this helps set up Elasticsearch and the plugin for the S3 input I couldn't find a whole lot of documentation when I was trying to set it up so I thought I would create something to help everybody else uh, the more you post and share the better karma you have when you have problems to find something that helps if you have any questions please put a question in the description or in the uh, comments I'll try to answer the questions as best I can and I'll try to put links inside the description as well that hopefully help you set this up good luck on AWS and I hope this helps you out